Could you please tell us about AMS? Yeah, AMS aircraft started or was formed uh, 10 years ago this week. Uh, and we started life as a remarketing company, but quickly moved into other services. And what we have now is that we have our remarketing, uh, we have technical services, and we have an, uh, new advisory services. Uh, and the difference is simple to explain. The marketing and technical work tend to revolve around specific aircraft, whereas our advisory work tends to revolve around industry sectors, whether it be geographic, whether it be aircraft type, or uh, predicting the future if you can. Uh, and we look upon the marketing as our, uh, our adult product, the uh, technical side as our juvenile product, and the advisory side as our baby product. Um, we're up to 13 people now, uh, and we have several contract engineers that work for us around the world uh, who are not directly employed by us but tend to spend a lot of time working on our proje on our projects. Uh, we're based in the UK in Haywards Heath and we had offices in the US and in Spain. Uh, we're finding I think like others that the world is becoming smaller and smaller because of communication uh, and more of the work is really being done out of Haywards Heath uh, in the UK uh, because it's actually just as easy to do it through there. You were recently certified by IAZA as an approved CAMO. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, CAMO was brought in by IAZA in 2007 and it's basically an attempt to uh, bring a standard of airworthiness into the industry, into the not just the commercial transport industry, but into corporate jets and general aviation. And uh, perhaps we were a little slow on picking up on this, but it became clear to us a couple of years ago that it, uh, our business was evolving and we needed to evolve with it. And so we looked at uh, Camo and whether we could really uh, become an approved organization. And we thought, yes, we would try it. And we've had to... Uh, invest quite a lot of time and resources, additional staff, additional office space, software, training. Uh, but what it's meant is that we're now able to manage aircraft uh, airworthiness, uh, not just for our existing client base of financial institutions, but also for airlines and for leasing companies. And uh, we just think it's the world is becoming more regulatory. Uh, we think it's a good thing. And we feel that we felt that we had to. Uh, go this route and go through the hurdles of getting approval by EASA to be able to offer to our clients uh, a range of services that would you know, truly benefit them uh, as they go forward in the future. Being a CAMO, how does that benefit your clients? Okay, we our clients at the moment are primarily from the uh, financial sector, but we have airline clients and we have less less all clients. Uh, we're able to offer them remarketing, we're able to offer them a certain level of technical service. What we can offer them now is a much higher standard technical service. When they're, If they have aircraft which are with airlines that are based in EASA countries, once those aircraft come back either through normal end of lease expiries or uh, repossessions, those aircraft lose their airworthiness validity because the maintenance is not being controlled by the airline. Uh, what we can do, we have, we're approved now to manage the airworthiness of the aircraft so we can take the aircraft back, we can maintain its uh, airworthiness validity, uh, which will mean it's probably easier to market that air aircraft, even if the aircraft's being broken up for parts, uh, parts coming off a, uh, an airworthy aircraft you know, will sell for higher values. Uh, in a sense, it's, we're able to offer a, you know, a range of services from a single source. Uh, there are you know, clearly other competitors who can do the same. We just feel we perhaps do it in a more commercial way uh, than our competitors do.